the Mirai botnet is the one of the most active botnets at the moment with over 600,000 at least as far as we know endpoints infected that launch attacks. That's the deep dive subject of today. Last week in our thread talk we talked about this on a higher level and today we're going to go into the weeds with Luca Cipriano. Um, he's a thread analyst at uh, Ontuit and uh, well he can explain difficult things to us. So. Uh, let's, uh, we are, we're in for a three today. Um, my name is Liu Jan Koning, I'm CTO of Ontuit, and let's get onto it. Welcome to Threat Talks. Let's delve deep into the dynamic world of cybersecurity. So, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, the Mirai botnet, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a reputation as we talked about last week. It brought down Deutsche Telekom, it, it uh, brought down uh, Twitter, Amazon, lots of websites. Actually, it brought down a whole country even. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, and, and, and it's still out there. Huh? So uh, there's, 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 there are so many reasons why we should actually get into the weeds of this. So that's what we're going to do, uh, Luca. Uh, welcome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, let's let's start at the beginning. Basically, a botnet. What, again, what what's that? What, yeah. How would you... uh, so basically, a, a botnet. Um, it's it's a network. It's a group of uh, devices which are infected by the same uh, malware, and they can be controlled by an attacker via a common and control server, and they can use to uh, well cause disruptions, as uh, we explained uh, for creating DDoS attacks. Uh, and a command and control server that's like a, that, that's probably something in the cloud or so. It's not like my uh, computer like at home. Uh, no, it's like it, a server it's like control. A, it's a server controlled by it's an, a single point, an attacker. Though. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a single point. Uh, well, um, first of all, I would like to <laughs> mention that there are different kind of botnets. Uh, we're talking about Mirai, and Mirai is uh, um, like a command and control uh, botnet, but there are also like a, a peer to peer botnet where the uh, basically, the the, the 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 affected device can work both as a client and as a server, so those are a bit more resilient. Uh, but in it, we are focusing on the Mirai botnet. This one is like purely um, command and control, mm -hmm. uh, of course. How do you, how how do how does this start? I mean, yes. suppose I'm the attacker. I want to begin this botnet. Sure. Um, so basically, you have a, a, an infected device. Uh, you infect a, a basically a device, and what this device does, uh, um, it will start to scan the network. An infection uh, means that I s install something on it. Uh, yes, that you install a, a malware on it. Uh, so there are different kind of malware. Uh, in, in general terms, what when we talk about malware, we uh, kind of uh, uh, think about uh, uh, programs that uh, do uh, malicious activities on a system. Uh, there can be different kind of mo malware, uh, like uh, for example a, a worm. Uh, it's kind of the the, the self-replicating uh, malware, so it can affect other devices, uh, like like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also like uh, Trojan, uh, which are uh, for example malware that they are disguised uh, uh, on uh, as uh, uh, legitimate uh, software. Or like the ransomware, everybody knows the ransomware. Those are malware that encrypt your uh, uh, your uh, data, and they ask uh, most of the time answer uh, ransom uh, to get it decrypted. Um, so basically, the the first thing what does this malware do? Uh, will start to scan uh, the internet for IoT devices. Uh, IoT is like um, uh, Internet of Things. Those are all the smart devices uh, that you can have at home. Like uh, for example, can be a smart fridge, can be like a light or uh, all these uh, smart things that we have. Um, it looks for those kind of devices which are exposed to internet and they have weak credentials. Uh, and uh, once uh, a device is found, it will communicate uh, with a scanned server uh, and uh, pass on the information, hey, we found this device. And then that server will communicate with a different server, which is a loader. And uh, that loader server uh, will just basically implant, connect to the device, implant the malware, and uh, the malware will be installed and then uh, run in memory. Yeah, so it runs, uh, you mentioned a couple of like home appliances and stuff, so it's not yes. just the IoT that we're used to in businesses, like uh, no. control, software, control uh, circuits that, that do cranes and stuff, yes. but it's also the lesser protected ones. I mean, at yeah. home, uh, I mean, uh, uh, your mother's uh, <laughs> uh, modem, for example, where she connects yeah. to the internet, that's, uh, I don't know how her the IT department, uh, how sophisticated mm, that no. is. In, in Probably the, above uh, average, since you're regularly there. No, well, no. no, no. I would like to say yes, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's that's not really the case. But, uh, but yeah, but indeed uh, you're right. So basically, uh, a lot of people maybe they, they set up, uh, um, they can have misconfiguration, for example, on their uh, home setup. Uh, we briefly touched the UPnP during uh, uh, last yeah. week uh, uh, thread talk. Yeah, this is maybe important to uh, to uh, to elaborate a little bit on how that works. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so basically, UPnP it's a protocol that's uh, it is designed to uh, make uh, some devices plug 
plug and play so to help uh, uh, people just configure their devices and have it open and uh, for example uh, um, my router has the uh, UPnP function that it is disabled, uh, and I keep it disabled. Uh, but uh, uh, like, for example, if somebody is not really um, security, uh, that does not have a lot of security knowledge, you might say, hey, that's easy, just uh, let me turn it on. But what this protocol does, it basically makes a device plug and play. Let's assume that you have a, a smart camera, for example. Uh, this smart camera, you set it up somewhere, and you want to be able from outside your room to reach it and see what's happening. Um, so basically, if you have a UPnP set, things as soon as you plug in the device uh, the modem and the device they talk and they know like hey I need to be reachable from outside on this port and the modem uh, the router will automatically open that port so making it reachable for you but for everybody else uh, as yeah, well. Yeah so UPnP whereas normally your uh, your uh, systems in your home network or any network actually since they're behind a router that does netting are a little bit protected because of this netting protocol here, which mm -hmm. doesn't allows outbound traffic but yeah. not necessarily in inbound traffic that's initialized uh, from the outside world. Obviously a problem if you want to reach your camera. Yes, huh? indeed. And therefore they've invented this protocol and that has this ramification because without you really knowing, you basically put your camera right on the internet, although it's in your yeah, network. Yeah, you make it uh, reachable in the internet. And uh, uh, that's what Mirai, for example, takes advantage, especially mm -hmm. if like uh, the, the, the device has weak credentials and the credentials sometimes are not changed or cannot be changed, uh, then uh, uh, well, uh, the, 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 the Mirai ma uh, malware will try to log in using all these well-known uh, uh, default credentials that are used. Um, so once then you, your device is affected, as you can imagine, then it will register with a command and control server, will be part of the botnet, and what that device will do, it will start to scan the internet as well to find devices that have the same issue. So that's why how it's self-replicating. Yeah, so you have one command and control server with uh, lots, of, uh, lots of devices that are part of it, and and since it's self-replicating, it, it grows and grows and grows unlimitedly. Yes. Basically, so but but there, that's a, there's a weak point then. That's the command and control server. Um, yes, indeed. In this kind of botnets uh, that have uh, command and control, you have a weak point, which is the command and control. But from the attacker's like, perspective. For, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> from the attacker's it's perspective. A for, it's a strong yeah. point for, yeah, uh, which make it less resilient. But there are uh, workarounds that the, the attacker use. Like, for example, have you ever heard about uh, randomly generated domains? Uh, mm -hmm. So basically, the attackers, what they do, they generate a lot of random domains, uh, which uh, basically have a string of letters. So even if you just block uh, that domain, Main, then the device will try to connect uh, periodically to those yeah. bunch of generators. So for the attacker, it's kind of easy to just register a new domain to a different IP, and uh, then yeah, it's a workaround, you know. Yeah, or they they, they uh, uh, somehow cryptographically generate a domain yeah. name based on the time, so the actual hacker can predict which domain name Indeed. they will choose. Indeed. It Indeed. may not even exist at the time your device already. No, uh, it will not exist for sure, and uh, then <laughs> they can be registered. It's registered, and yeah. then the, but the malware knows beforehand because it has yeah. an algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So then that's that's a workaround that they use. Um, especially this kind of malware are, uh, are a bit sneaky for detection as well, uh, because what, what they do after the malware is, uh, is installed, they remove the file uh, from the device. So the, the malware keeps run on in memory, which makes a bit more difficult also detection, because uh, mm -hmm. like as uh, people that are well versed in memory forensics, they know that this is quite complex. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because you so shut it down and it's gone. Uh, well, yeah, uh, that th th is a point, but the fact that you shut down the device, because we know that memory is not persistent, when you turn on the device, it might not be still infected, but it's still vulnerable, so it will be reinfected. Yeah, one of those other uh, guys in the botnet will probably remember your yeah, IP address and immediately connect back. It will reinfect it again. Or but this opens a way of yeah. mitigation, actually. I mean, Sorry? this opens a way of mitigation. Um, uh, it's not like well, persistent malware in, in uh, a sense that it's on the device persistent. So if you, if you plug it out, reboot it, change your password. Yeah, if you can change the default password then, or uh, patch no, in no, case no. of a vulnerability, then uh, your device will not be vulnerable uh, anymore. Uh, there's a trade-off for the attacker, of course, like uh, the, the, in some way, uh, well, it helps detection, but it makes it, uh, well, less resilient, yeah. but it's more difficult to detect. Um, and yeah, well, then now that it's uh, basically it's uh, the, now that your device is part of the botnet, uh, the, common, the the attacker can send commands to the botnet and uh, basically DDoS a target, for example. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, for example, if I uh, the, the Mirai, I think was uh, found. Um, Discovered in 2016, uh, well, they used it, uh, for example, to uh, carry a, a really huge attack uh, against a, a, a major DNS uh, provider, uh, the, the called the DIN. DIN uh, DNS. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and basically... I was a user. 
You are a user. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you remember any problems in 2016? <laughs> uh, I think it was before 2016 that I actually used it. Oh, okay. Well, they conveniently, you, you, uh, it's, they had a protocol. If your IP address changes, then the domain, the, 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 the DNS record also changes. So change. if you had, a, if you had a, uh, a changing IP address, you would use the server. Yeah, that's so that's really it, useful reasonable. actually. If you're because you wanted to so log on on your home equipment remotely. Yeah. Exactly what we're talking about. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Um, but apparently Google and Amazon also used it. Uh, yes, and uh, basically that you had uh, a lot of problems uh, with uh, uh, reaching uh, websites like, uh, uh, well, uh, Netflix, uh, Facebook, or Google it created really a lot of uh, a lot of issues. Yeah. yeah. Uh, shall we focus on uh, the attacker for a bit? I mean, so sure. um, there's the the uh, the MITRE framework that uh, talks about um, uh, different attacks that exist. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Is there anything to say about what what kind of in what area should we? Categorized. Um, yeah, well, uh, from uh, basically the, the botnet point of view, uh, there is uh, um, an, uh, a, an attack. I don't know if people are familiar with the MITRE, but uh, they have codes uh, for attacks, and to those codes for attack pattern, you have like mitigations that uh, basically correspond. Yeah, uh, I will put, uh, put links in the show notes, eh? yeah, and uh, we have infographics can, and all to yeah. uh, read all about this. Uh, but basically, it would be um, exploiting public-facing interfaces. Uh, sorry, appli appliances, because basically, well, uh, well, you need a public-facing uh, appliance uh, to be exploited, and of course, uh, compromising infrastructure um, with a botnet, because you're, they're compromising, uh, well, companies and user uh, infrastructures. Yeah. What's the motivation of an attacker? Uh, well, uh, the motivation of an attacker it, uh, uh, can be different. It depends on what kind of attacker. Um, uh, can be like uh, somebody wants to create his own botnet to rent it on the dark web, make some money uh, just renting their botnet. Could be like a, a financially motivated attacker that wants to target a company and say, hey, if you don't pay me, I'm not going to stop targeting you. Or it can be like uh, uh, used in the warfare. Uh, like so basically every yeah. every uh, think, uh, every angle we can think of, yes. Mirai is being used on this, huh? Ah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's really broad on yeah. this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fairly easy apparently to get it. I mean, uh, the, the, the source code is even on GitHub. Huh? Yeah, as, as we mentioned. So in you the and I could start our own business in this area <laughs> yeah. quickly. You can look, and, and actually the fact that uh, the, the, the source code, uh, it's uh, publicly available, it, it led also to create different strains, like as I think I mentioned last week as well, uh, well, there's a Mirai kind of sort of botnet that actually installs crypto miners on your devices. So basically they use it to get Bitcoins and this kind of things. Mm -hmm. well, not, not Yet another revenue stream for the attackers. Yeah, lots of money to be made in this one. Yes. So. We don't want that, of course. No. How do we defend? Okay, there are several uh, uh, things that uh, that that uh, that can be done. Uh, so, first of all, don't activate uh, uh, things on your router that you don't understand, like UPnP. <laughs> that will help a bit. Like, try to understand what you're doing when you set up the things. But for would you say that this is enabled in most routers? I do believe that uh, in the past it was enabled by default for some routers, but now I think it's uh, disabled. But still, people sometimes, uh, you know, like you buy a, a smart uh, camera. Again, we'll talk about it. And you want to put it out, you don't have knowledge, you're going to look online and you don't know who is Yeah, going but there's, there's multiple to techniques to things. connect your router to you. I mean, with a cloud server, for example, that's what you see now. A camera mm -hmm. connects to a cloud server and you connect to the same cloud servers, yeah. which has proper authentication. There's a responsibility yes. for the manufacturers. That, yeah. That's happened, like, for example, with, uh, let's say, Google's smart appliances, then yeah. you have a third party that mediates for the authentication. So you yeah, well, we had a smart bike example uh, the other day, and that actually got, went bankrupt, so now nobody can use their bike anymore. That's the downside yeah. of it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true, indeed. Uh, I think somebody published also their their key to, but that's yeah, true, that's not. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's now so, there's always hackers everywhere. And yeah, exactly. And this so time for the good. Could, right? Yeah, that, that was for the good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's that's interesting. Change default passwords. Yeah. Um, Change default passwords. So what, if I were patch appliances. Yeah. Yes, and but I, I don't want to be yeah patch appliances. But how do I mean? Have you ever upgraded your your fridge? I mean. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> that's obviously, uh, we do it all the time. But uh, where do we get? <laughs> we, where do you get a? Uh, uh, a well, if it doesn't it, exist. The thing is, like, it also depends on uh, what are you, uh, what kind of devices you have. Uh, some they automatically uh, pull for appliances. Like, if you use again, I'll talk about Google because it's the first thing that I think about it. But they will uh, try to get uh, updates themselves. But I do believe also that from your Google Home app, uh, you have like a button to force uh, to check for updates if there's any updates on the 
uh, on the firmware. So every now and then will be good. To yeah, take but there are that. many types of equipment and solar panels and yeah, all that that's, that's that that don't great. have that maturity. Yeah, and so, it's hard for yeah. a regular buyer to uh, no, no, see the difference. Any other mitigations in terms of the MITRE framework, for example, that uh, that we can use? So this yeah, one is patching is an obvious one. Uh, I would say uh, it, it depends also some, uh, still from which point of view uh, you that get infected by the botnet or you that get targeted by the fo botnet. Yeah, true. Uh, but uh, like uh, uh, filtering network traffic. Can help both uh, because like for example uh, I do have at home uh, some uh, smart block list that they get updated continuously and they will uh, basically block uh, known common and controller addresses outside mm -hmm. which of course like uh, it is easy I was explained before to change them uh, but it's still they're quite often updated so that can help mm -hmm. uh, as you as a defender sometimes also like uh, geo blocking can help uh, because those devices are everywhere in the world and do you really want to allow traffic from do you really need to allow traffic to your whatever you're hosting from every countries in the world that can limit a bit the scope of uh, does work within our experience uh, you know, it is chasing a uh, ghost right I mean yeah that's, that's, that's because then it's another country or another country and yeah. then, and then uh, somebody it, it is easy to it is easy to change I, I remember this one guy that got arrested at the airport uh, entering the United States because uh, some European country bought some uh, Syrian uh, IPv4 addresses so they thought he was there when he was applying and he was lying because that I'm in England <laughs> yeah so yeah, this, yeah this but has but Challenges, but, but, but that's some of the things you can do. Yeah, but actually, for whoever is familiar, for example, with the uh, a pyramid of pain uh, from the suns, they will know that those kind of indicators, like uh, uh, for example, URLs or IPs, are at the bottom because they're like trivial for the attacker to change. So it's something that's. Uh, but like already in inspecting traffic uh, and knowing what is expected and not expected can help you understand a if your device is. Affected, uh, infected by one of those malwares, and be it if the traffic that is incoming is traffic that is malicious. So. Should we all uh, reboot our routers uh, once in a while, like the FBI suggests? Uh, yeah, that's since uh, it's in memory, a, 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 a good a good one uh, for, for sure. It does not hurt, but people need to understand that uh, re just rebooting is not enough because if the malware runs in memory, of course, then it's not going to be infected. Disconnect, but it will be infected again if it's not patched, if the hole is not closed, so it can help. And I think the, the one... But patching this in this way actually only means a strong password, right? Uh, it's not well, doing anything really the, weird. The thing is like it's... Um, um, it's broad. I'm talking about botnet in general, uh, so not necessarily only Mirai, but uh, like in general, they could use some uh, vulnerabilities as well to access yeah. your devices. Not necessarily mean. I mean, not all the. Yeah, so Mirai isn't even that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So Mirai isn't even that. It's very successful, but not even that sophisticated then. It, it um, I think it's quite, quite, quite easy, but it's implicit is the strong point because yeah. it's really easy to uh, basically deploy, uh, expand, and uh, to use. So that's the strong point, but a weak point as well. Any final thoughts? <laughs> Any final thoughts or um, advice to our viewers? <laughs> <What> you, <laughs> well, yes. Um, first of all, try to uh, be a bit more. Uh, n tr try to, to learn uh, a little bit more about security uh, that can help like a security hygiene about password for example uh, but it's not only for devices but like uh, I, I'm surprised that a lot of time people I'm talking about I say like multi-factor authenticator and they look at me like uh, what are you talking about what is that like uh, so basic uh, in general basic security measures people should be get more comfortable with that uh, more confident with that uh, about companies uh, IoT devices Zero trust, segmented, put them on a separate network, uh, analyze the traffic that is going there and is getting there. Firewall rules, close them. Do you really need to have that device going everywhere? Like, I mean, and no UPMP. <laughs> yeah, no UPMP. A traffic pattern from IoT devices, sometimes it's easily, uh, they, you know, easily what sh they should. What Good should news is there's actually a lot we can do. It's just, there's a lot. Yeah. can be very difficult. So yeah. you'll, you'll need someone who actually understands. Yeah. Yes. All right. Luca, thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. To our viewers, thank you very much for attending this uh, extra deep dive of uh, Threat Talks. If you like this episode, please uh, like this video, uh, subscribe to it, so you'll get the next one uh, next week, which is about the HTTP2 rapid uh, response uh, vulnerability that we're going to deep dive, dive into as well. Um, and uh, you can go to threat-talks.com, uh, and there you'll find uh, everything about what we just talked, links to other sources and also infographics that you can use if you're building your own presentation in, in your company, for example, and want to explain how this thing works. 
uh, well, we have you covered. So go there, uh, and if you have any questions or uh, feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Mail us at team at trash that a uh, thread that dash talks.com um like a uh, <laughs> yeah exactly and <laughs> uh, and also uh, uh leave your comments uh, below uh, and uh, we'll all read them and respond to them um so from our security operations center floor i say goodbye to you and hope to see you next week thank you for listening to thread talks a podcast by onto it Cybersecurity and m6 did you like what you heard do you want to learn more follow thread talks to stay up to date on the topic of cyber security Thank you.